this uh, practical session, we have invited four speakers. So thank you for all speakers who have accepted to join us today. Um, we have uh, Gian Gianluca Vanuccini from uh, CIO Tuscany region in Italy, who will present the regional strategy for digital skills. After we will have uh, Cyprian Barson from Ecoland Association who will uh, present digital skills for young adults. As well, we have invited Ungrun Arpa from Nyemar Norwich Center who will talk about the inclusion of se seniors in rural digital communities. And we have Nikos uh, Ziguritsas from uh, Elino Giamaniki Agoji. Sorry if I'm pronouncing not very well, who we will talk about the remote rural schools as learning hubs of the rural community. So you will have all about seven minutes for your presentation. We will have also the occasion from time to time to collect some questions or remarks or suggestions from the audience, either in the chat, as Enrique invited you to do it, or directly. So immediately, I will give you the floor, Gianluca, uh, for uh, the first presentation of this session. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks, Pascal, and thanks, Enrique. Thanks for the invitation. And then um, I share the screen. OK. OK, I hope you see my screen. And um, I'm Gianluca Manuccini. I'm director of ICT for Tuscany region. And uh, uh, I'm also in charge of digital transition for the region. So uh, in this area, I also uh, um, try to do my best uh, to promote uh, digital skills uh, uh, within and outside uh, the administration and uh, within the territory of Tuscany region. Um, so, uh, we, um, of course, uh, as a region, we are very involved uh, in uh, increasing digital competencies in all fields. Uh, we have listened till now uh, the many uh, possible um, uh, impacts that uh, um, uh, addressing the digital skills uh, can have in uh, all our aspects of society and all the initiatives that have, have, done, have been done at uh, EU level. Also at the national level within PNRR, we are also working with um, national level with an initiative called Repubblica Digitale, which is promoting digital skills uh, across uh, um, Italy. And uh, as a region, uh, of course, we want uh, to promote uh, both uh, new initiatives and also uh, to uh, collect uh, all uh, that have been done till now but our, by our administration, because many initiatives have already been done. And also we tried to uh, connect the dots, no? So to connect all the things that were uh, ongoing. And so we tried to work, uh, we, we, we developed it with the, this uh, strategy for digital skills and culture, which is uh, uh, an overview of all the uh, initiatives that the uh, Tuscany region is doing and is willing to do uh, regarding digital uh, skills. And uh, we tried to, to see the, the issue on four uh, possible um, points of view. So the digital citizenships, so for example, basic skills for citizens, the digital skills for economy, so uh, how to uh, improve the economy through new digital skills, uh, digital ed education, so working with schools, uh, with all the education network, and uh, of course, all the, uh, the part of digital skills that can enhance the opportunities for job placement. So these are all the um, initiatives uh, that uh, the, the, the guidelines, the main pillars that uh, are ongoing within our region and within our um, regional strategy. So uh, this has, of course, is being funded by several types of funds. So uh, at EU level, uh, national level and regional level. And uh, we are also addressing uh, different uh, uh, recipients and different stakeholders. So uh, municipalities, schools, uh, um, all the uh, volunteering associations. And uh, uh, this work uh, is a very important uh, uh, teamwork because it, uh, we have uh, implemented a permanent uh, uh, working group across all the departments of the uh, Tuscany region. Uh, so including the agriculture department, including the uh, job and education department, uh, the health department, and we are working with our colleagues on a permanent uh, level to address uh, such issues. Some examples of what we are doing. 
We are working uh, to build uh, digital facilitation centers across Tuscany. So uh, as a response to the recovery and resilience plan uh, regarding uh, digital competencies. So our target is to build 169 digital facilitation centers in Tuscany by 2026. And also our target is to uh, connect an existing network of digital uh, and not digital facilitation points. So physical and digital facilitation points that uh, can uh, be connected and put in synergy because there are many, many different uh, points of contacts of citizens on different areas, including agriculture, including different areas, including job placement, uh, education, um, health services, in which uh, uh, digital skills can be an additional service that can be done to citizens, uh, that can be offered to citizens during uh, the interaction with the citizen, so the physical interaction. Also, we are promoting uh, a regional uh, existing platform for dissemination and training, which is ongoing since many years, the TRIO platform for e-learning. And we also built, uh, with the help of our uh, education department, uh, a digital facilitator pro profile. This is an, a, a, an official, a certified uh, profile, qualificated profile, uh, on which uh, um, uh, training courses can be done and on which citizens can be, of course, certified. So this is very uh, a very challenging uh, work we are doing in these uh, months. And uh, of course, we want to uh, put together also the different uh, um, points of view and the different models uh, with a, a common uh, red line uh, no, uh, integrating all the approaches. Another example uh, regards the agroelectronic and agroinformatics profiles. So we are working together with our colleagues from agriculture department in order to uh, build new uh, vertical uh, specialization profiles that can help uh, companies uh, on agricultural area. Uh, uh, an, an important aspect that uh, I forgot to mention is that uh, in, in including these uh, digital facilitation centers, we are promoting inner areas of the region. So the, 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 uh, the rural or areas say more distant from say, uh, habitated from uh, um, urban centers in order to help citizens uh, where they uh, where they have uh, less uh, um, um, access no, to, to physical services so where it is harder to to have uh, physical uh, contact with the urban offices so uh, this is a, 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 a way in which we can help a distributed facilitation network so um, uh, we are working on several other areas, also specialization on cybersecurity and AI. And uh, uh, our approach, uh, as I said before, uh, with this strategy is to continuously monitor the effect of this strategy. And uh, uh, so one of the challenges is how to uh, define a set of uh, measurable KPIs in order, uh, and we are working with this with National Statistics Office with uh, many important universities and research agencies, and of course with Repubblica Digitale, so with the national uh, government uh, initiative. So going to conclude, uh, so the, our main challenges are how to make digital facilitation a stable pu public services, so not relying on occasional external funding, uh, how to uh, put, so we learned that uh, the key success factor is to work together with different regional departments and uh, at different levels, and uh, so uh, also with the universities, SMEs, and all the different stakeholders, okay? Thank you very much. For your attention. Thank you very much, Gianluca. Very interesting presentation experience of uh, of a regional strategy in digital skills. I have noted several components which I would say we we try to develop as well uh, in the rural pact. You have uh, presented a multi multi stakeholder approach, multi funding approach integration, uh, networking between existing initiatives, these multi-level governance that you have just mentioned here are uh, different components that we try to, I would say, to encourage in the, in the rural pact. Uh, I don't know if there are some questions or needs for clarifications from the audience. I do not see anything in the chat, but you can also raise uh, the hand. We have uh, two minutes if you want to uh, to, to raise some questions to Gianluca. Otherwise, you will have also the occasion to, uh, to raise your questions or remarks a bit, a bit later in this session. I see 
see any hands for the moment. So thank you very much, Gianluca. And uh, now I'm giving the floor to Cyprian Barson, who will talk about digital skills for young adults. You have the floor, Cyprian. Thank you, Enrique. Thank you, Pascal. Um, I'm here. My name is Cyprian Barson. I'm uh, representing uh, Ecoland, uh, which is a small NGO located in the uh, northeastern uh, part of uh, Romania. Uh, and uh, in the last two years and a half, we developed a project uh, dedicated to adults in a rural area. Um, and uh, the name of the project is uh, No One Behind. Uh, through this uh, project, we try to uh, develop the skills, the digital skills for the adults in rural area. Because uh, Cyprian, do not hesitate to put uh, in full screen your presentation if you can. Oh, Thank, you Thank you very much. Thank you. So uh, the adults in uh, rural areas, uh, I will speak. Um, uh, I will share with you some ideas regarding the background. Uh, in the eastern part of uh, Europe re related to rural regions. Uh, here, the adults uh, are facing uh, difficulties in developing uh, their uh, digital skills. Um, and uh, they also facing difficulties in integrating in, uh, in the world, economic world and uh, with digital challenge. Uh, as you all know, um, the economic uh, there is no economic sector which is not uh, affected you say like like that uh, by the technology by the digital uh, digitalization and uh, the um, need for ICT skills is uh, great uh, is bigger and bigger each day um, at the beginning of this uh, project we made um, a few surveys uh, all over the Europe, because in this project were about seven countries uh, involved. Uh, the situation is pretty the same in the rural area all over the Europe, especially with the adults. Uh, and uh, as the age is uh, racing, the problems are uh, bigger. Um, these people, uh, ad these other people in uh, rural areas, uh, they have problems related uh, to the access to online services. Um, they cannot learn uh, online almost nothing because they don't have the skills to open a computer or follow something on their smartphone. It's easy to, to buy, to obtain a smartphone or a computer, but it's uh, not such easy to know how to operate it or how to use it. So uh, this, this absence of the digital skills um, can result in an exclusion in, for the um, uh, employment opportunities, can restrict the participation in uh, the digital economy and uh, limit the access to services uh, like uh, healthcare and government resources. Uh, through our project, we try to um, take these challenges and provide uh, training and support uh, for those adults who, uh, who live in, uh, in rural communities. Um, as a result of the project we, that we developed, uh, we have some instruction materials which are um, structured in uh, five models. Uh, we try to um, we try to make uh, the information as uh, comprehensive as it can be because the digital and the ICT sectors are um, uh, very broad. So um, making uh, a manual or making the models uh, be comprehensive it's a real challenge. Uh, we try to um, teach them about the information information processing, about uh, how to communicate uh, using uh, ICT, uh, about content creation, about, of course, security and problem solving. Uh, 
Um, another outcome of the, um, the project was uh, related to an educational game, which is uh, a simple game, but uh, using these visual um, um, ideas, uh, we thought that it's much more easy for them to retain the information and to or to put it into application. Um, you can also we have a platform uh, where uh, the game is integrated, integrated, and all the materials um, are uh, there to be used by the stakeholders or adults. But uh, the stakeholders like uh, schools, um, local municipalities, local authorities, and the different actors in the economic sectors. Uh, can uh, have access to that info to those information so uh, they can use it for uh, uh, solve the problems that uh, they are confronting with so the name of the the website is uh, no one behind org and i will try to speak a lot of uh, uh, more about um, the outcomes of the project and how you we use them uh, after the pro project was uh, finished. Um, the main um, the main uses are in the field of local authorities because right now in Romania uh, the government and the local uh, authorities and municipalities are trying to digitalize digitalize the services. Uh, so every service that um, you have to use like tax paying or submission of documents, receipt of documents. You have to use an online platform. Uh, it's very, it's much more easier that than staying in a line and uh, an office in a building. It's much more faster. But for uh, enable to use that technology, you have to know to have digital skills. So, uh, because the authorities and the government are trying to reduce uh, the expenses with the employers, they introduce this kind of di digitalization in their services. But um, of course, it's fast for the, the people who use them. Uh, and they are pushed to uh, learn and to have digital uh, competences in order to make uh, these services work for them. Another um, very good way of using the outcomes of the project, uh, we are multiply and disseminating the, the results in schools. Of course, the COVID, uh, the pandemic with the COVID situation uh, made uh, a lot of schools to be closed, so they uh, have uh, online lessons for the children. Uh, young people don't do not face problem with uh, technology, but uh, it's very hard to, for uh, young uh, children, maybe seven or eight years old, uh, who doesn't know how to read to make an account and to go there uh, to open the online lesson when the teacher are um, uh, making the classes. So uh, for them, there is uh, absolute necessary like an adult to do that work. And that adult it's, um, doesn't know, if he, uh, if he doesn't know how to use the technology. It's very, very hard for the children to make to be on uh, this online lesson. Of course, uh, another good example is about parents who wants to uh, check the, their school situation for their uh, children. So uh, it's hard to do that if you don't have uh, the knowledge uh, to operate, to make an account or set up a password. Uh, these two examples, like lo uh, local authorities and schools, are the kind of uh, examples where people are pushed to use the technology because they need it. Uh, and um, another example is local businesses. Here with the local businesses, uh, something uh, related more to motivation. They are motivated to use these uh, skills. 
if they have the small restaurants or small uh, um, any kind of other business uh, if they want to attract the tourists or they want to be known for what they are doing uh, they have to teach how to make that in this digital world um, regarding the um, the lessons that we have uh, uh, that we have the uh, writing down this project uh, developing this project it's uh, something very interesting that we uh, a, a very interesting challenge that we have uh, the digital sector or domain is very broad so the information is very uh, complex it was very hard to address to people in a rural area which uh, they don't have uh, knowledge about English and uh, in digital and ICT sector almost all the terms are in English uh, it's very hard to explain uh, to them even what a memory stick is doing so uh, we try to use a clear and simple language uh, we try to uh, take the complex terminology and to make it uh, as much as under, uh, understandable for uh, uh, for them. We communicate in a, a language that uh, the target group can understand and uh, can uh, visualize the the information. Um, we try through that game to make the as much as uh, more in, visual uh, information that we can uh, put it in uh, in our material because uh, this kind of information helps them more than reading a text and um, because we try to follow the digicomp um, framework uh during uh, writing down the mod modules uh it was a real challenge to break down the complex processes and uh, to make it in the smaller and more manageable steps and uh, what we tried in the end of uh, after we done all that work it was uh, to provide clear instruction and guidance uh, for uh, them in order to be able to apply it and uh, those digital those information in uh, uh, and assuring that the participants understand uh, and can follow along uh, uh, easy with uh, the information thank you Thank you very much, Cyprian, for these very inspiring uh, examples, tools, uh, and we are happy to also to uh, to learn from uh, countries from Eastern Europe and to see how far you are also developing uh, digital skills for several targets, several beneficiaries from local authorities, schools, businesses, and also innovative tools uh like the game that you presented which is publicly available so we are very you know happy to to learn from this pedagogic approach and you will explain that you try to break the complexity of this uh, i would say the fact that uh, it's sometimes uh, uh seen that to, to acquire, acquire uh, digital skills is complicated but uh, you have demonstrated that it's quite uh, accessible so uh i could take one or two questions or I do not see any any things in the chat uh, if there is more. somebody who wants to raise a hand otherwise we continue as we are it's 10 14 yes Cyprian you wanted to say something yes take care with the game it's uh, really a bit tough. okay thank you so it, if there is no question at this stage, but we will have other occasions. So I inviting now Udrun Arpa, who will, uh, I would say, present uh, other initiatives for another target groups, which is seniors in rural digital communities. Udrun, you have the floor. Yeah, thank you. Uh, and to all of you organizers, thank you for inviting me to this webinar. So I will now just share my screen and 
I hope you have it now in full screen, right? Yes. We'll yes. See. Okay, great. Uh, so, everyone, my name is Hörun Harpa and I'm director of Nihima Knowledge Center in Iceland. Uh, I want to present to you a short introduction on one of our European cooperation projects funded by Erasmus+. Uh, this project was focused on supporting the inclusion of seniors in rural digital communities. And the target group was uh, uh, senior citizens in rural areas, but also volunteers, staff and trainers working with the group. Well, Nihimal Knowledge Center was uh, the coordinator, but the project uh, group also included uh, partners from five countries, Iceland, Bulgaria, Sweden, the Netherlands and Spain. Uh, so if we start just uh, a little bit, why? Why did we think this was important? Uh, as we know, of, and we have been talking about here, there's increasing reliance on digital technology in people's everyday life. And that calls for the development of digital skills to enable participation in the Internet information age. Um, also, as we know, uh, existing services such as banking, shopping are, uh, and shopping are moving increasingly online. And the likelihood of excluding certain groups, such as the elderly, and especially those living in rural areas, increases. And we see that the, uh, the population in rural and remote areas, they have less access to services and activities. And this puts rural population at a disadvantage compared to urban ones, and can be particularly problematic for older people. Uh, who may face a greater risk of social isolation, reduced mobility and lack of support. And that is why rural areas require alternative solutions and support to be able to equally benefit from the remote public services. So the aim of the projects uh, of the project uh, was to strengthen the digital skills needed for senior citizens to feel confident using online tools to manage and improve their quality of life. Also to provide step-by-step -step instruction on how to access and use identified public services in the four countries. Uh, and I say four because uh, the Netherlands did not uh, work on the material uh, like the four other countries. Uh, so also to develop trainer skills in local community members. Like I said, we were focusing on trainers, staff, uh, but we also, and volunteers working with a group, but we also wanted to focus on uh, just anyone. Every member of the community can provide support. And we are all in some cases uh, in the situation to provide support to family members and friends. So yeah, um, yeah, up, upgrading the skills to uh, all of us being able to uh, support and give training to elderly uh, and also to strengthen networking and cohesion with the community. So the project uh, had three outputs. For the first one was uh, task and field research, which we started on. And that uh, included analysis of public digital services in the participating countries. And there we come to, it was in the four countries, uh, so not ne Netherlands. And the point was to identify online services and also the need of the target groups. So we did this uh, by first documentary work uh, by the project managers. And that was analysis of public digital services in the participating countries. So what services are digital and online? And then secondly, we did need analysis with questionnaires for senior citizens and for volunteers and staff and trainers. So we reached out to the group uh, to get their input on which services they found necessary, interesting and useful. 
as well as which skills needed improving. And based on the results from the desk research, uh, a virtual assistance tools were developed. Uh, first, we did uh, some like what we call national roadmaps uh, for each country. So these are written this, uh, instructions where we are describing a total of 47 online public services offered in these countries. And then also uh, we developed 20 animated tutorials with step-by-step -step instructions in animated films. And the third output was a handbook for trainers, uh, which included methods, tools, and examples. And the aim was to develop trainer skills in local community member to provide digital competence trainings, and of course, support to elderly in their community. Um, yeah. If we look at the main outcomes, um, we found that the support is both very much needed and wanted. The target group was very interested and interested in, in participating in course developed to enhance their skills. We also saw that uh, the support needed is not only for the practical things and the public services. So uh, support to use social life services is just as important as support to use the practical uh, service like banking. So we saw that social media, listening to audiobooks, podcasts and music, uh, online shopping and other services that have more to do with maybe social inclusion. Uh, and these are just as important uh, uh, and both seniors and trainers believed that greater skills to use these services would really improve the senior citizens quality of life. Uh, we also found that there's a great lack of support, despite the fact that different organizations are increasingly moving their services online. Those same organizations are not creating instructional content that supports all groups of the society in using their services. Uh, and this puts elderly in rural areas, of course, especially in difficult situation, since organizations operating in rural areas constantly become fewer. Um, when we were developing, uh, just shortly about lessons learned and recommendations, when we were developing the products for the project, some of us were concerned that the material was too simple, that we would be underestimating seniors' ability, abilities, that we would even find the material a bit childish. However, that was not the case at all. Uh, we found that simple is really better and the group really needs step-by-step -step instructions. Uh, we also found that the main thing holding them back is the fear of mistakes. As many of them don't even dare to try, that of course results in lack of skills and competence. And this is why we have to provide support in person. Instructional content is very important, but still we need to provide support at least during the first steps of seniors in online life in person. Um, also, we found that we have to come to them. Um, there is this thing with this group um, of seniors like I guess we all know, they seem to think that they are only bothering the rest of us by asking for help. So we found this really important. We have to come to them. We have to provide and uh, invite them uh, our assistance and help. And in my opinion, after, after this work, uh, our best option is to establish broad cooperation of the service providers, also social services, especially locally, and then institutions and other with the ability to support the group. Um, we also need this cooperation since such material like ours 
they become outdated quite quickly as the service services are both developing and we are also seeing new and new and new services coming up. So we have to find a way to keep it up to date constantly. And that would be best done with this broad cooperation. Um, yeah, so I, I think I would uh, end it with that and then just show you uh, this picture of my rural town. This is where we are located in the southeast of Iceland. Everyone invited. Really beautiful place. So thank you. Thank you very much, Ukrun, and thank you for the invitation. It's quite attractive. And thank you for, for your, your presentation, quite inspiring in terms of supporting elderly people to access to digital skills, a very good project example of social inclusion, improved quality of life. I also heard about the importance of supporting in person, also this cooperation, it's, uh, it's in the center of this project and also the different tools that you have presented between roadmaps, animated tutorials and book for trainers are very inspiring. Um, I could take one question or two questions maximum uh, before moving to the other target group on young people. If there aren't any remarks or questions, I'm moving to Nikos, who will uh, present an example. Sorry, but, of... Pascal, there was yes. a, a reaction from Alexia. Perhaps she wants to raise some of the concerns she found important that was raised uh, within from the two presentations that we heard on young adults and, and seniors. Okay. Um, Alexia. Thanks, Enrique. No, I didn't want to raise concerns, but just I had a question that we see we're talking about seniors and in other presentations, we're talking about uh, schools and businesses and as rural communities are very small. I was wondering if uh, the, uh, the presenters have, um, you know, a view on how we can combine these things. So how can uh, uh, schools also be a place where adults are are or, or seniors are, are 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 trained? So it's about this cooperation that I had this question in in mind, but it can be taken after the last presentation. I don't want to delay um, things. Just a question. Thank you. No, thank thank you, Alexia, for your uh, your question or remark. I don't know if Cyprian or Ugrun wants to react on Alexia remark. Otherwise, it can be taken afterwards because there is an yes. important, a relevant presentation regarding schools as well. So maybe at the end of the of all the presentations. Okay. Okay. And also, do not forget that we have also later breakout sessions in case you want to come back on some uh, some uh, points that have been uh, raised, uh, among which the one from Alexia. So Nikos, you have the floor to uh, present the learning hubs of the rural community. Uh, hello, uh, thank you, Pascal, for the introduction. Thank you, uh, Enrique and the Rural Park team for the invitation to be here. Uh, let me just share my screen. Um, uh, my name is Nikos Guritsas. I'm a member of the Research and Development Department at Elino Germanikia Wogi. And I'm very honored to present today the work we are doing in the Learning from the Extremes project. Uh, and I'm going to discuss uh, uh, the, the notion of the school as a learning hub of the rural community. Um, the starting point, let's say, of the, uh, the intervention, which is funded by the participatory action from DigiConnect, is the digital skills divide that we can see in the EU. EU. Uh, the recent statistics from Eurostat uh, are from two, in, uh, from uh, two th uh, 2021 and onwards, uh, stating that just over one quarter, almost 26% of the EU population, aged 16 to 74, uh, reported above basic overall uh, digital skills. Uh, this is uh, uh, a higher share can be seen in cities, 33%, while uh, in rural areas we have only 20% above basic uh, overall digital skills. This overall digital skills uh, indicator is a composite indicator 
based on five types of skills, information and data literacy skills, communication and collaboration skills, digital content creation skills, uh, safety and skills, and problem solving skills. So uh, our starting point is in order to address this issue, we should start from the beginning, from schools. And in our vision, a school is the uh, an integral part of the local community. Uh, Uh, so, uh, in learning uh, from the extremes, we are uh, trying to address the inequalities of access to digital education by enhancing inclusion and by reducing the digital gap suffered by school communities in remote areas with low connectivity, limited or no access to devices, and digital education tools and content. Uh, the basis of our in, uh, methodology is uh, fostering digital innovation and openness in uh, remote schools through a self-reflection process. Uh, this process offers a highly realistic view of the actual needs of our schools, which are related, highly related to the local needs of the communities. The local, the needs of the schools uh, are members of the local community. The school community is the the, the local community, uh, and in a rather dialogical way, offers constant reflection about upon crucial aspects of schools as learning environments and centers of innovation and as hubs of social engagement and responsibility. I cannot. Uh, uh, I'm not sure that you can see the map. We are working with one one hundred twenty three selected schools in. Uh, sorry for that in 10 countries, in Cyprus, uh, Greece, Bulgaria, Croatia, Romania, uh, Italy, Portugal, Spain, Ireland, and Finland. Uh, so uh, the Learning for the Extremes project is uh, developing a rural schools innovation roadmap, uh, providing tools, providing development of rural schools, uh, uh, providing infrastructure and uh, equipment, but also content to schools, to teachers, and to students. Uh, we uh, support the school in its journey. We start with assessing the school, so, uh, the school needs uh, by providing an uh, insight on the openness and the innovation using self-reflection tools. We uh, assist the schools to build a viable European school development plan. We support the school by building and empowering uh, a change team, a change team with change uh, teachers, change agents, teachers, and students that are uh, ready to build their own projects. And we work with student projects that are addressing the needs of the local community. Uh, it is a very important aspect of this process that the students are in the driving seat of the development of the school projects, and the school projects are highly related to the, log, to the needs of the local community. Uh, one of the, uh, the aspects that they are working on is providing high-speed connectivity to schools. Uh, high-speed connectivity can offer unique learning experiences to students by providing access to remote or virtual labs when such infrastructure is not available to the school environment or by bringing live phenomena described in school books. Students in rural areas can also be supported by remote or virtual tutors where teachers of specific subjects are missing. And also, students and schools can be supported to act as information hubs for the community and collaborate with other schools and organizations. We have an excellent example of a, a, a network of schools building uh, uh, seismographs and uh, exchanging ideas not only uh, between schools, but uh, between schools and other organizations, and schools are acting as information hubs for the rural community. Uh, it is also about building a community of change, a community of schools, and supporting this community. We provide mentoring support, uh, webinars, and professional development to teachers in order to uh, support the uh, development of digital skills, not only for the students, but also for the community. 
uh, key uh, webinars are uh, uh, webinars are of primary importance in this uh, uh, in this uh, in our work. And we have chosen webinars because uh, we are supporting schools to buy equipment and uh, 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 and have better connectivity. And as you have seen, we have students and teachers from uh, uh, 10 different countries. And uh, in order to bring them uh, together and exchange ideas, webinar is one of the most efficient uh, uh, tools. Uh, we have different, uh, 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 you know, uh, subjects, uh, teachers as creators and designers of digital and blended uh, lessons, uh, how students can visit uh, 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 observatories in uh, the other uh, side of the world in uh, Chile and observe uh, uh, and have the opportunity to, 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 to observe uh, 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 the, the world in a different uh, view. Uh, how we can build a maker space in the school, and uh, this is a, a, a notion that come up, comes up in different schools in different countries. Students are building, building a maker space, and they are opening it to the local community. They are bringing parents inside. They are bringing a, a other organization. They are bringing the municipality and exchange ideas and work on common projects. Uh, we also. Uh, have uh, uh, open uh, the notion of open educational resources practices is very uh, active in order to provide content to schools and uh, teachers and students. And uh, also we have uh, summer schools for teachers uh, uh, with a, a different uh, uh, thematology. Our vision is to have the school uh, as a learning hub for the rural community a school that introduces innovation in the classroom, a school that creates an attractive environment for all, facilitates inclusion, and very importantly, engages the local community, engages the family, engages local NGOs, the industry, experts, universities, research institutions and museums, and sees itself as an ecosystem of digital innovation. Uh, I, I was uh, uh, thinking about examples to bring into the discussion, but uh, uh, taking, uh, 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 you know, uh, building on the last presentation and also about the question uh, that was made uh, from uh, Mrs. Ruby earlier about uh, we have seen uh, uh, digital skills of seniors and uh, uh, we have a very nice example uh, from intergenerational learning. Uh, a project in uh, in two Finnish schools called Reading with a Granny. Uh, students uh, work on their digital skills uh, by uh, working with seniors, with retired teachers and with other seniors. They get together, they're reading books and exchanging ideas, and they go back to the school and try to make digital reviews uh, and uh, podcasts and websites with collaboration with seniors. And uh, in this way, they are not only building their own digital skills, they are collaborating with the local community, uh, with the seniors of the uh, uh, around the school and building common projects. Uh, I don't know uh, where I am with the time. Uh, so uh, maybe we can continue with the discussion. I would like to thank you all for your attention. This is my email, and we, you can find more information on learningfromnextreams.edu and schoolofthefuture.edu of the slash LFE. Thank you again. Thank you very much, Nikos. Uh, it was very interesting to hear about how schools can play as a leverage and disseminator actors to, uh, to support the development of uh, rural communities based on uh, digital skills development so very very interesting and, and a lot of uh, learning aspects that we have heard